Welcome back to the Olive Oil Critic. I'm so glad that you're here with me today, learning more about delicious extra virgin olive oils, how to use them, different producers, stories, everything from branch to bottle. So today we have a delicious Arbequina to enjoy from Francisco Gomez. I've tasted some oils from this olive grove before. They have 3,000 hectares, over 3,000 hectares in their in their grove um, and I think it's around 300 are cultivated Arbequina and they have many many trees and this has been a going concern for many years and this is their Serrata Arbequina so it's 100% Arbequina which is a really common variety, especially in North America. It's one of the most common varieties grown in California uh, because it's adapted so well to high density growing. Um, this isn't grown in high density and it is grown in Spain, not in California. Um, but this olive oil from Francisco Gomez is um, an exciting one to try together. Um, you can see the gold bottle. They have a Serrata Piqual that's a black bottle. So if you see the gold and black bottles, um, it's their Serrata version or I guess release and one of the the key factors in this specific oil is that it is the absolute first harvest it's the first olives off the trees and they start harvesting early early October and sometimes even late September now with climate change the olives need to come off but they're picked before verasion which means they're picked before the olives um, start to color at all they're basically unripe um, but they're very green <clears throat> unripe olives, which is one of the characteristics that makes this specific Arbequina um, a little bit unique because a lot of times um, Arbequina is left to ripen a long time. It's a very um, high fat oil, so it has tons and tons of oil in it and they'll let it ripen so you'll get 25% yield, which is amazing. They're tiny, tiny olives. They're about the size of your pinky fingernail. They're just little tiny morsels and the trees are loaded, <laughs> loaded in the olives. And they're often picked when they're pink, almost purple. So they're high fat content. And then they're very buttery because they have a large pit and just a little bit of flesh around the outside. And that's what basically holds all the oil. So the pit is what imparts most of the flavor um, and volume to the pulp of the, the oil. And then when it's separated, you get um, a high volume of oil that's left and all of those flavors from the little bit of flesh in the pit are imparted into that oil. Oil doesn't have any flavor on its own. It's all the micronutrients and chemicals, volatiles, phenols that are imparted into the oil from the flesh. So the lipid itself is completely flavorless. It's all the other components of the olive that are infused into the olive. And so that's done in the milling process, which is why the milling process that you know, half an hour <laughs> when the olives are actually in the mill is so crucial because that's when, when all of those flavors are extracted out of the olive and imparted into the oil. All right, let's give this Arbequina a taste. Artichoke, green almond, definitely unripe artichoke and fresh cut grass right off the bat. <laughs> this oil tastes like fresh cut grass or smells like it at least. Lots of aroma. It um, is quite intense, I would say, which is not normal for Arbequina. Arbequina is usually quite subtle and Arbequinas are very... Um, yeah, are typically quite subtle. And these are, this one is bright and very grassy, very aromatic right off the bat, which is exciting to smell. An experience. Oh, that's delicious. Okay, let's give it a taste. Mm, super buttery, really ripe almond, green almond as well that richness of the nut um, and it has a real nuttiness to the center of the palate and then it's got this beautiful round hardly bitter but a beautiful lingering black peppery finish it just kind of warms the palate and and just sits right here <laughs> it's this beautiful black pepper feels like i just had um a, a drink of delicious olive oil. I'm trying to think of, of a food that would compare to this flavor and I'm having a hard time putting my finger on it, but um, it's so well balanced. It's really buttery. It's really rich. This would be delicious in baking. You could use this in like lemon ricotta muffins. I would use this in pancakes. I would use this in scones. Um, it'd be delicious with blueberry scones. 
because it's got this butteriness, this nuttiness to it. It's very, very rich and creamy, um, but again, has that lovely lingering peppery finish. It's not bright. It's not sharp. There's no capsicum there. It's just this warming, lingering, harmonious finish, and it lasts. It's still sitting there. It takes about 45 seconds often for all the flavors of an oil to cross your palate, um, but this is no exception. This oil is a beautiful example of an Arbequina. Many Arbequinas can be very flat or just greasy and oily. They don't hold their character very long. This is almost a year old now. This is a 2021 harvest. So to be 10 months old and still have this beautiful lingering pungency, you can tell the phenols are there. This oil does not taste tired after 10 months, which is pretty incredible for an Arbequina. Arbequinas usually don't have that um, much longevity and kind of oomph to them. They get tired pretty quickly, especially if they are picked ripe, which this is not. And that's the difference is that they sacrifice some of that yield to be able to pick the olives early and ensure that there's a really good quality oil to enjoy for many, many months to come. Mm. Yeah, it's so creamy and so nutty. <laughs> I just love it. Um, yeah, I feel like I need to hop in the kitchen and start baking, but that's exactly what this oil would be perfect for. Um, it would also be great for like a butter lettuce salad dressing. If you wanted to just drizzle some oil, squeeze of lemon on not arugula, not kale, <laughs> nothing bitter or bright green, but some simple butter lettuce some delicious leaf lettuce from the garden would be a perfect combination for this as well, because you don't want anything that would potentially overwhelm it. You want to really complement those buttery nutty notes and um, not complicate the peppery finish. I wouldn't necessarily add a lot of vinegar or acid to this oil because that'll help. It'll basically make that disappear and we wouldn't want that. So um, I would just keep this plain and simple, use it as is and um, drizzle it on, on bread, drizzle it on salads and you know roasted tomatoes. This would be lovely if you roasted some tomatoes and then drizzled this on after, even a simple pasta. Um, this would be really delicate and wonderful with. Um, and then on the other side, definitely use it for baking. It would combine so well with just the richness of, of any baked good, um, whether it's on top or inside. I never hesitate to bake with, with olive oil instead of butter or other fats. It's so tasty. This oil is no exception. Well, thank you so much for sharing this oil with me today. And I hope you'll subscribe to my channel to learn even more about extra virgin olive oil and all it can bring to everyday life.